Hey, what's up? My name is Yak, and I'm gonna show you how to add stickers, signs, and graffiti into your 3D renders. So for the past couple of months, or I would say even years, if I come across a really small sticker or a sign or anything, I take a picture of it, and when I add them to my scenes, it makes them look a little bit more real and lived in. And if you look at my renders, sometimes you'll see like my own custom tag that I've made, like a little spray painted bit. I always kind of use that as a way to tag my work, but also make it feel like it's part of the world. World. And recently I've been putting that together into like one big asset pack. So in this video, I'm going to use a couple of pieces from the upcoming texture pack and show you how to set them up in your scene. Let's jump into Blender and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so first up, I have this demo scene I put together, kind of all in one location. This photo scan is of my buddy who let me, uh, who just stood as a model and let me get a couple scans of him. If you want this model and three more kind of similar to this, you can get that on my Gumroad. So the free version is, is the green jacket one and then the full lineup is two bucks. You can also get those four plus I think like three or four more on my Patreon. And then the whole background is just made with Polyhaven assets. Polyhaven has an add-on which actually lets you access their entire library without ever having to leave Blender. So super, super handy, super nice. I have an affiliate link with them. So if you want to get the add-on, use that link and it'll help me out a bit and it'll help you out a ton. First up, signs. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is hit shift A and add a mesh plane that'll open up our browser and that'll let us find whatever asset. So if you're using something from my asset pack, these are all the signs in it. Let's just grab this one. Seems pretty good. Bring it up above the box and set it up. All right. So if you were just to throw this straight into a background, I think this would be perfectly fine. But if you want to get a little bit more out of this single image, let me show you that. So the first thing I want to do is in the shader editor here, I'm going to take the color and I'm going to plug it into the roughness. So we have a little bit of roughness variation. So let me plug that into the roughness and you might not really see a full effect until we convert it into black and white using a color ramp. I'm going to draw up that right on top of that line. And hopefully if I get the lighting right, you can start to see, there you go. You can start to see where the values are black on the image. It's going to be more reflective versus where the values are light. It's going to be more matte. So that already adds a ton. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing, let's give it a little bit of 3D thickness. First, I'm going to go into edit mode. So you can see that our edges aren't totally around the image. See, these corners are not beveled. They're like straight out. So I'm going to hit control shift B and then drag out from the center and that'll bevel that. So that looks pretty close. And over here, if I hit a, you can see this is where our UV map is. So I'm just going to select all of it and then scale it down with S and just kind of bring it into the inside bounds of the image. Maybe even drag this over using G and then X, kind of lock it to the X axis like that. Same thing here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now our whole sign is all the way to the edge and I'm gonna hit A in edit mode and I'm just gonna extrude it back a little bit like that. All right, so now our sign actually has a little bit of depth and you see how the UV map has stretched here, but what we can do is go into face select mode, alt left click, that'll select that whole edge. And then I'm going to just pick kind of a side here, like a really flat side. I'm gonna hit U, project from view, and I'll just kind of place that somewhere here on the side where there's a flat edge. Here on the, on the very side, is, I think it looks pretty good here. All right, so we kind of hide that and now our sign has a bit of an edge. The other thing is that you can see that there's these like little bolts and they're clearly flat. This detail of the bolts, I think if you're going to go this far would be worth adding because when we have lighting changing like this, it will create a shadow that will make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's, let me show you how to add that really quickly. So I'm going to hit three on my numpad to go into a front view and I can kind of start to see there. If I unplug the roughness, I'll be able to see it better. There we go. I'm going to put the 3d cursor right there. I'm going to hit shift a to add a new object cylinder and give that cylinder six sides. It's giant. So I'm going to zoom out a bit, scale this down. I'm going to rotate it on the y-axis like that. I'm going to try to match it to the photo. 
looks like that part is down like that. So that's how it looks. Uh, it looks like it's upturned a little bit, so I'm going to try to find that angle, try to mimic it a little bit. Scale this up. That looks to be the right size. Select the bolt, shift, click the sign, control L, link material. So this gets the same material. And when we go into edit mode for this bolt, we can see that it's all unwrapped properly, but we want it unwrapped and projecting just this texture onto it. So I'm going to hit U, project from view, puts the bolt UV map right here. I'm going to bring it up to the bolt, bring it up here, just kind of scale it, align it, get it close. All right. So that looks pretty good. It's not a super perfect detail, but it'll at least help me get that shadow that I need. So if I go into render view, when I rotate the environment, you can see that that little bit casts a shadow, which would be accurate to how it looks in real life. And then we just take that the shift D duplicate and just kind of bring it down to the bottom up close. Obviously it doesn't look super, super great. looks a little bit like PS2 graphics, but I think that for our purposes and for making it, everything look just a little bit more realistic. Uh, I think it goes a long way. Let me plug that roughness back in and there we go. We'll have our sign. Up next, stickers. For the stickers, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to hit Shift A, Mesh Plane, navigate to our stickers here, and let me grab one that I think looks good. Okay, so that again comes in as a single mesh plane with the transparent background. And the way I've set up my stickers is that I just kind of bunch them up into single images. So that makes it easier for me to cut them out and use them as I would like. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm just going to get one. Use loop cuts, control R. Let's say I want to grab this one. I'm going to hit P and then separate it by the selection. Everything else I'm going to delete but our texture is still here and everything is still on it. So, so then we have our sticker. I'm gonna, in edit mode, give it a couple subdivisions and you'll see why just in a sec. And it looks like a good amount. Here is how it's set up. Go to the UV editor and when I hit A, I can select my whole object here. So what's nice is that I have this one and if I duplicate, like with Shift D, go to edit mode, I can look for a different one like this. Shift D, hit tab, find another one. And it's okay if we grab some of the other stickers on the side, we can always just cut that out. Shift D, one last one. Let's grab this tall one here. Okay, so we have our stickers here. Let's say I wanna cut this part out. So I'm gonna go to face select mode, select these faces, X, delete. This is just a little bit of like cleaning up. You can do this if you want to, or you can just drop the whole image on and just use it as is, but I wanna clean this up a little bit. Gonna select this edge, hit G two times to slide that edge loop. Grab this, grab this, delete it. And like here, for example, I wanna delete these faces, but I will then grab this corner of the sticker, but I don't wanna do that. So also in vertex select mode, you can hit G two times and kind of slide it out of the way like this. So now I can select these faces and delete it. I also don't want this whole side part in here. So I'm gonna select these edges and hit G two times to slide them in like that. Gonna merge the vertices for these because they're very close. And then delete these faces. All right, so we have our stickers all kind of cut up into different bunches. I'm gonna select them all, right click origin to geometry. If it's a flat surface, you really can just take the mesh, take the mesh plane and put it right up against the surface. You know, that will work just fine. But let's say you want your sticker to be on like a corner like this. You know, you can't really get it to be on there because it's bending. So here's what we're gonna do. And this is the way I like to do stickers is using the shrink wrap modifier. So I'm gonna bring these kind of closer over here, select it, modifiers, shrink wrap modifier. And the target is gonna be this part. And you can see what happens immediately. It gets all like distorted and broken. That's not what we want. So there are a couple things you gotta do to massage it into place. So the first thing is set the offset. I'm gonna hold shift and click and drag my mouse to very carefully adjust this offset. So you can see the further it gets away from it, the more we get back the original shape of the sticker. So we want it to be close. We don't want it to be too far. So how do we do this? Well, you can see if we go into edit mode, 
it's basically projecting straight down onto the surface. But when it gets here, when it gets here, it projects this way and it gets it all distorted. So what I like to do in order to fix that is I'm going to just hide this modifier and just disable that. I'm going to select this edge. Let's say this is the edge where it bends the most or maybe here. Shift S cursor to select it and up here make the pivot point the 3d cursor so all of this all of these faces here will have to bend a little bit on that pivot point and then i'm going to enable my 3d cursor so you can see it so that that's where it'll bend and that's what i wanted to do so i'm gonna hit r x and bend it a little bit just help it get closer to the face of my geometry so if i go into straight side view you can see the closer I get it to this, the surface here, the less distortion I'll get when it projects that face. So I just need to bend it a little bit more here. This edge, shift S, cursor to select it. I'm going to select these faces and jump back into the side view and then rotate it like that. You can even move it from here just a little bit. Okay, cool. So now our sticker is kind of close to the shape of that curve, which will make it a lot easier. So now when we turn this back on, you can see it's not distorting as much. It's pretty much there. So this requires a little bit more work on your part, but I think it really goes a long way and it doesn't take as much setup as it seems. The reason I like using the shrink wrap modifier to put stickers onto surfaces is when I go into when I go into rendered view, you can see that the sticker now has just a little bit of shadow and maybe a little bit too much here. The distance is too high. You can see the sticker has a little bit of shadow and I feel like that makes it a little bit more realistic because not all stickers are applied perfectly and evenly to all surfaces, especially when it's this kind of like ragged, quick way that you see stickers being applied in like city areas and stuff. So I think that using the shrink wrap modifier and fine tuning the distance distance between your object and the sticker and keeping a little bit of that shadow uh, makes it just a little bit more realistic. On the sticker, you see how it's like all warbly. We can take a noise texture and plug the factor into the normal and we can use a bump. Plug that into the height. So it kind of makes the sticker look a little bit more bumpy. Um, I think it gives it a little bit more sense that it's an old sticker that hasn't been applied properly. Now, if you want to add a sticker to something that's a little bit more organic looking, kind of like how I added all that sticker all over the photo scan, what you just have to do is you have to give it a bit more uh, massaging. So I'm going to take this shrink wrap modifier off the cube. And let's say I want to put this sticker onto this more organic shape. So if I was to just select that as a target, the subdivision of the sticker helps, but it still distorts it a little bit too much. And so to keep that from happening, you're just gonna have to uh, just bring it a little bit closer, make sure it doesn't clip inside. And then I'm gonna use proportional editing up here on the top, just kind of slowly move the pieces so that they're closer. I'm holding Alt and then left clicking to select that row of faces. So you just wanna kind of massage it and bring the faces manually a little bit closer to the subject so that when it projects it, it doesn't have to distort as much. So it's a little bit, little bit tougher, but proportional editing can help a ton. And so this is how I do the stickers in my scenes. Also, I just saw an add-on by uh, CG Matter, I think, or Default Cube, whatever he goes by, where it's kind of a similar method, but his method looks cleaner. And if you want to try downloading that and then, I mean, I'm not affiliated with it at all, but if you want to use that and then use my stickers with it, and if it makes your life a little bit easier, then seems like a pretty, pretty sweet deal. So yeah, that's how you would apply stickers onto surfaces. And last but not least, graffiti. I'm gonna make like a rock wall. The reason I wanna use a rock wall is because it'll really show off this method really well. So let me just grab something here from the Polyhaven Asset Browser. Ooh, this might be good. All right, so it's not displacing yet because we don't have the subdivisions for it. I'm gonna subdivide it a bunch. And as I subdivide, you can start to see the displacement coming through. All right, look at that, that's great. We can even increase the displacement if we want to get a little bit more aggressive. So let's put in a graffiti texture. 
The way to do that is not by bringing in a mesh plane as before, although we could and we could use the shrink wrap modifier to shrink wrap it on there. But uh, with graffiti and with paint and stuff like that, it's really on the surface in every single nook and cranny. So the best way I think to do it is to combine it in the shader editor with the shader for the rock. So this process is a little bit technical, especially if you're not really familiar with shaders and mixing shaders, but I'm going to do my best to explain it at a pace that can help you learn and can show off the effect in a really good way. I'm going to drag and drop one of the graffiti textures from my file browser, just right there. And I'm also going to duplicate shift D, duplicate this principle to BSDF, plug that into the color. And if I plug that straight into the surface, you'll see that that's what the graffiti looks like on its own. And that's what the rock texture looks like. So when we keep the rock texture, we'll just put the graffiti on top. So we're going to combine these principal BSDFs together using a shader, mix shader node. So I'm going to plug the graffiti into the bottom one. And I only know this because I've done this a couple of times and I always got to plug it into the bottom one and plug the rock into the top. And then we'll use the alpha to make it the factor. Then once we plug this output into this material, you'll see what it looks like. So now we are getting all of that displacement and all of those little details and bumps from the rock. And all I'm doing is adding the color onto the rock from the graffiti, which is really, really helpful. And this is a lot more realistic to how paint and graffiti is uh, added to surfaces. So for the most part, for most people, this is enough, but let's say we want to move some parts or delete some parts where we don't want the whole image as is. So we can do that by adding a custom UV map just for the graffiti. The default UV map is right here. If we go into the data properties here, you can see it's got one UV map and it's sharing both. Well, I learned that if you just add another UV map here, I'm going to call it paint. And then here, if you add a UV map node and we reference the paint that we just made, plug that into the vector and then in the UV editor, we find our graffiti. When we tab into edit mode, we'll see all the faces are uh, right here. So when we grab these faces, because we have paint selected here, I'm gonna hide the overlay so you can see. When I move this, it actually moves the UV of the paint and it doesn't disturb the rock. I'm not really exactly sure how it works. <laughs> Somebody who understands shaders better than me can probably explain it, hopefully. But you wanna have this set up and you wanna make sure you add a new UV map to your object. So if you add the paint onto a different object, you're gonna have to go into the object data properties and add another UV map and call it paint as well. So for every new object, you're gonna to wanna to do that. But now that we have it set up like this, we can actually make changes. So for example, in the shader editor, we change this from repeat to clip, which means when we move these faces off of it, it gets rid of them. So that's nice. So let's say I wanna keep just like this blue tag here, for example, I just wanna keep that. I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna box select all these faces, I'm gonna hit Control I, and then over here on the UV editor, I'm gonna hit A to select all of them and just move them out of the way like that. So then I'm gonna hit Control I again. This one right here is the only one that I keep. And if I move this over onto a different side, I'll get this other one. That's kind of like how it works. So if I wanna put a tag right here, just these are the faces that are selected, and I'll bring it over the tag. That's in the UV editor. So you do have to understand UV maps a little bit just to kind of understand how this is all working. But if you wanna just also copy what I have or you wanna download this whole demo scene that I have set up here, that'll be down in the description. So hopefully that kind of explained how I do signs, graffiti, and stickers for my 3D scenes. And hopefully that can help you and you can use these methods in your artwork. And if you wanna support this channel directly, the best way to do that right now is through Patreon. I'll have my texture pack up there. I'll have more 3D models, all kinds of stuff up there. And I'm gonna, I plan on updating it and adding more stuff. I'm already working on the first update, which is like a bunch of new stickers and signs. And that's it, see ya.